What's up, you all? What is going on? We're about to react to this video by Art at Midnight. It is titled The Princess and the Frog is Visually Insane. I agree, it is. Uh, this is one of my favorite Disney movies. My top three favorite Disney movie. I did Despicable Me recently. It's not in the top three, nowhere close. But um, it would have to be. Ooh. Top three would have to be Hercules, Princess and the Frog, and Encanto. In no particular order. It's very hard for me to, to decide which of those three are my favorite. But it's definitely between those three. Hercules, Encanto, and uh, Princess and the Frog. Those are the only three Disney movies that I could watch and repeat. I've seen the other ones because y'all wanted me to react to them. But I stopped doing Disney reactions. And I did Despicable Me because someone really wanted uh, me to see it for some reason. Anywho, watch this video. Princess and the Frog, for all the flaws it may minutes, have, girl. was the peak of Disney's hand-drawn animation, which is a shame, actually, because it was the second-to-last 2D Disney film ever produced. And this is extra sad when you consider that it was supposed to kickstart another hand-drawn golden age. I do not hate CG. I consider CG and 2D completely different art forms, and Very each different. are genuinely beautiful in their own way. Yeah. But it is too bad that CG is all we get from Disney now. And Moana one was a time they tried making it look more I was supposed to see this movie Wish and I decided not to react to it. It looked awful. <laughs> there is something so special about yeah, this drawn animation different. that this movie celebrates so well. And I want to appreciate this lost art form Maybe I'll everything that makes know. it beautiful because I don't think 2D deserved to die. The Princess and the Frog takes place in New Orleans, which is revolutionary for Disney because it's their first fairy tale set in America. While there was some controversy really? with this choice, and I'll link an article below if you want to read more about it, I do think the artists did a beautiful job at representing this city. The leadership team spent almost two weeks in New Orleans experiencing experiencing Mardi Gras and taking thousands of pictures for inspiration. There are so many callbacks to the city's uniqueness, yeah. like masquerade balls, beignets, the Lafayette Cemetery, and street music. In 2D, the settings are established by hand-painted backgrounds, which characters and any moving elements are animated on top of. Go back to backgrounds Nola. are a huge part of creating the art style of an animation. When I was flying out to NOLA, I literally turned this movie on and watched it like one and a half times on my, uh, on my way into NOLA. It's one of the reasons great. Disney 2D films. I should will come buy up. like a condo there. Yeah, I'm gonna buy. Yeah, I'm gonna buy a condo, like a a travel home, like a vacation in New Orleans. Because the last time I was there, I didn't like where I stayed, but I want like a nice permanent residence there, so I can just come and vibe like once or twice a year. Period more sophisticated than other 2D films. Disney believed The Princess and the Frog would revive 2D yeah, at the time, the, so uh, they wanted to reference movies with them. Disney's classic art style rather than the later stylized Disney movies. For the city scenes, the main inspiration was Lady and the Tramp. Like Lady and the Tramp, the artist prioritized simplicity and painted only the most important details within the city. So instead of depicting an accurate painting of New Orleans, they just painted what New Orleans feels like. For example, the French Quarter is marked by intricate year European-esque architecture. While this looks so highly badly. detailed, you don't see every brick or overly elaborate ironwork, but it feels like it's there, and this is unquestionably New Orleans. Lady and the Tramp also used distorted perspective to add character to the environments and draw your eye to specific places. The Princess and the Frog uses a similar strategy. Not all of these buildings have parallel straight lines. Some of the walls, tilts, posts, and ornaments are exaggerated. It unconsciously reduces the realism of the city and makes it feel fairy tale. Because while this is in a real city, City, it is still a fairy tale story. To me, one of the most beautiful settings in this movie is the Garden District. In real life, the Garden District of New Orleans is one of the best preserved American mansion neighborhoods. In the movie, it's where the quote royalty live. The backgrounds consist of Victorian homes in the gingerbread architectural style. Lottie's home is essentially the movie's castle. The mansion is designed like a wedding cake topper and Lottie's room sits in a turret like a princess tower. I love Lottie's room so much. It's excessive and hyper pink to reflect her burning desire to be a princess as a kid her room is filled with toys and it essentially stays oh God, i gotta rewatch this movie Whereas all Tiana's happy memories are coming back for me watching this movie books replacing her toys uh, this contrast i have so many good memories from watching Tiana's this movie with other people so many good memories especially from college Oh. While Lottie's neighborhood is very luxurious, it's distant and standoffish, whereas Tiana's neighborhood is tight-knit and intimate. 
Tiana girl. lives in the ninth ward, and her neighborhood is characterized oh, by smaller single-story I mean, houses that sit on stilts, which are common architecture hood, to girl. this area. Not it's only okay. is The Princess and the Frog set in New Orleans, it's also set in the 1920s. The vintage influence is the most obvious in Tiana's restaurants. The Almost There sequence, which I think is such a beautiful piece of animation, is her magazine clipping come to life. This art style is very different than the rest of the movie, and it was inspired by Art Deco, poster art, and the paintings of Aaron Douglas. Douglas was a part of the Harlem Renaissance, which was a revival of American Black artists and culture spanning the 1920s and 30s. It was one of the last things animated for the movie, and it was completed in a rush, which is mind-blowing to me because I think this looks perfect. I don't want to put CG down in any way, but I do think that this surrealism is something that 2D does so well in Very comparison. Well. I really Very wish we got well, more of yeah. this. Tiana's real restaurant is so beautiful too. The artists had to blend the imagery of a sugar mill with fine dining and also resemble Tiana's own version of a castle. I love how they put little crowns on the top of the chimneys and there's a beautiful frog influence in all of the lighting, tablecloths, and plants. It's also significantly warmer and inviting compared to the opulent illusion of Dr. Facilier, which in turn, this fantasy is actually a lot darker than Tiana's original fantasy. Like how Lady and the Tramp influenced the city art style, it was Bambi that influenced the nature art style. The background artists focused on the general silhouette and shape Bambi. of the forest rather than all the tiny details, very similar to like what they did in the city. And in Bambi, they used a lot of the surrounding nature to direct your eyes to certain parts of the screen. So details are exaggerated at certain focal points. My nose always images. itches whenever I Some start Some of the artists also videos. had to take pictures of wetlands at frog level so that they could understand what the frogs would see. One of the elements frog that makes levels. the bayou extra gorgeous is actually the lighting. With the advancements in 2D, the artists could paint detailed reflections onto the character characters and settings. So you get these really beautiful shots like there's a rim light off Tiana and Veen and the sparkly sunshine on the bayou water. Many of Disney's prior movies have quite simplistic lighting. It's still beautiful, but for example, you don't get the same majestic streams of light in earlier 2D forests. This dimension makes the story more emotional, especially because light and shadow are essentially their own characters in the movie. Dr. Facilier is the shadow man. Every time he appears on screen, it's combined with a play on shadow. He's introduced with only his shadow, lives in the shadows, and dies by his shadow. I think this shadow play is done the best in the song Friends on the Other Side. I love how his shadow dances differently, pulls in his chair, and is the main focus after the deal is done. Not to mention, all of these shadows are quite terrifying, and I think we need Very to bring back yes. the terror of Disney movies, because what's a childhood okay, without some Disney trauma? In contrast, love is represented by light. At the beginning, Tiana's home is lit warmly to convey the coziness and love of her family. Later, the fireflies use their light to direct Tiana and Naveen. This sequence of going down the bayou is so cozy and actually had a lot of iterations to make sure that each speck of light moves perfectly to the beat. The firefly lighting also enhances the romance. I'm the first one to talk about Kiss the Girl and how beautiful that scene is, but I think Ray really pulls through during Evangeline. Tiana's transformation scene is also one of, actually no, it is the best transformation scene in a Disney movie, yeah. and so much of that is because of all the sparkles and lights. I mean, compared to the Beast's transformation, this is so much better. Although I do think that Beauty and the Beast has a much better kiss. Mama Odie also celebrates love with glass rainbow bottles. This is a reference to bottle trees, which is a practice big, that is believed to bread. originate from the Congo area of Africa. The bright colored bottles are thought to lure and trap dark spirits inside. And how pretty is this as so they pretty. sing about blue skies and sunshine? Speaking of rainbows, yeah, and she said this in the swamp. I'm about to rewatch this movie. This is, oh, I love this movie. Dog also has beautiful use of color and specific a complimentary color. There is so much green in this movie, obviously. So it's refreshing to have its complement, pink, in the person who compliments Tiana. I think, I think Disney said they're coming out with the Tiana too. I think so. This choice also makes story sense. As kids, the green symbolizes Tiana's future with frogs, and the pink is Charlotte's desire to be a princess. There are also a lot of complementary colors in the city itself, like how they made the sky a humid teal and complement it with the amber glow of the streetlights. And at the masquerade ball, the background and characters are mostly in blues and greens and browns to make Charlotte stand out. Although I think my favorite use of color is definitely in the musical sequences. The bright yellow and oranges of Almost There are so invigorating. It reflects Tiana's motivations so well, and is also 
also a really great contrast to her very bleak reality. I also love the psychedelic colors of Friends on the Other Side. And of course, because he is a Disney villain, he also uses Disney's iconic evil green. I also yeah. love the detail that when Facilier is talking to Naveen about seeing green in his future, the tarot card actually has a lily pad on it. And actually, all these tarot cards are real tarot cards and are accurate representations of what Facilier is talking about. The musical numbers also do perspective really well. Perspective is what gives a 2D image depth. There's a lot of upward shots in The Princess and the Frog, like Tiana talking about her chandelier, this shot of Facilier's magic. These shots are visually interesting because they are a cool perspective. The animators also used 3D assets for some of the shots that involved a changing perspective, but you can't tell at all because it looks exactly like 2D. For example, these stairs that Lottie runs down, these are not hand-drawn, these are not hand-painted, this is CG. This is so oh, seamless really? and you can really tell how far Disney has come with this progress when you wow. look at Beauty and the Beast, which was one of the first movies that did this, and you can quite noticeably tell the difference between what is 2D and 3D. Yeah. Another benefit of 2D is the ability to create extremely expressive characters, and I think almost all of the characters in this movie have a really memorable character design. Lottie, for example, is such a gem. I love her design. She's a hyper spoiled daddy's girl, but also a beautiful friend to Tiana, despite Very coming from different friend. backgrounds. The supervising animator for Lottie was Nick Ranieri, who also did Cusco and Lumiere. All of her outfits are designed to look overly princess, and if her house is a wedding cake topper, she is a cupcake. She has excessive petticoats, and I love the way she spins around and is so love struck at the thought of a prince when she's a kid. As an adult, she looks like bubblegum. Her movement is very animated. It's very excited, bouncy, and dramatic. She has a couple of my favorite visual gags in the movie, like when she introduces herself as Sparkles and the crazy people line. Lottie's design is round and energetic, which is a cute contrast to Tiana's reserved nature. Tiana is very different than Lottie because she's not wishing for a prince. She is actually working towards owning a world-class restaurant. It's something she promised to do with her dad and is now trying to fund herself. I think Tiana is so beautiful. I love her design. She has this very elegant, sophisticated, mature class. And I'm just sad that we only she get to see human amazing. Tiana for one third of the movie. The supervising animator for Tiana was Mark Hen, who also worked on Ariel, Belle, and Jasmine. She actually has the most iterations of the cast. So there's little Tiana, adult Tiana, and frog Tiana. Little Tiana is so adorable. I love that she wears the classic frog prince crown. As Tiana grows up, I think she has some of the best dresses of a Disney princess. This silver dress looks like a twinkling star and is yeah, attention grabbing amazing. in the opposite way to Lottie. It's elegant rather than over the top. I also love how her wedding dress incorporates her story with the lily pad design mm -hmm. and her final outfit, which is a reference to the lily pads as well, but is a more 1920s version. She is a cute frog and they actually did look at actual frogs when designing both Tiana and Naveen. I don't have oh. much to say about frog Tiana, but at least they gave her some long legs and mascara, I guess. Naveen is a womanizing, a lazy partygoer of a prince who is financially cut off from his parents. His supervising animator was Randy Haycock, who also worked on Kida and Clayton. Naveen's design is based on the dapper, debonair man of the 1920s, but I like that they made his cuts a little bit more baggier and looser to show his carefree spirit. This same spirit was kept in Frog Naveen, who is a bit darker and more toad-like than Frog Tiana, but consistently has very dreamy slash lazy eyes. This may be controversial, but Naveen is probably one of my least favorite Disney princes. I'm so sorry. Really? I some people that are really sad to hear that. The problem I have with Naveen is that he is lazy and I just don't think he changes in a day. You may know that I love Flynn Rider and while he may be a thief, at least this man is always thinking two steps ahead and I, I respect yes. this hustle. But to give Naveen credit, he does grow, which many princes do not. They kind of just stay the same. Of course, every great Disney movie has to have a great villain and so much of their memorability comes from their design. Dr. Facilier is just awesome. He was designed by Bruce W. I hope Kingdom Hearts 4 has Princess and Frog. Oh. Oh. Smith, who was also the supervising animator, and coincidentally, the creator of The Proud Family. He actually oh, describes designing Facilier as a combination of Captain Hook and Cruella. Facilier is a sleazy voodoo witch doctor looking to rule over the souls of the city through money and power. His name, Facilier, is actually derived from the French word facile, which means easy, and he's all about easy. giving people the easy way out, but it usually comes at a cost. This is a contrast to Tiana, who works hard for what she wants. Facilier is shirtless, sort of, because he's meant to be kind of greasy, a little sketchy, but he does Very have sketchy. a coattail and top hat to show that he cares about money. The crocodile teeth are a reference to his voodoo magic, and the way Facilier moves Michael was Jackson. inspired by the way jazz dancers moved oh. in the 1920s. Mama Odie. Okay, I mean, sure. Every time I saw Facilier, it was given like Michael Jackson. 
like dance moves. The but okay. To Facilier. She is one of my favorite characters. She's this 197 year old blind voodoo fairy godmother that lives in a shrimp boat in a tree. Her supervising animator was Andreas Deja, who also animated Scar and Jafar. Design wise, really? she is a complete opposite to Facilier. So where Facilier is slim and tall, Mama Odie is short and round. She's also dressed in white in contrast to Facilier because she is the light side of voodoo magic. And instead yeah. of just giving people what they want, she tries to give them or make them see what they need. And actually in original scripts, she was supposed to be his mother. Mama Odie is oh, kind of kooky. Facilier's and I love mom. all the little artistic a, a liberties twist. they took with designing her environments. Her cauldron is a bathtub and her magic brew is just gumbo. I just love the way she <laughs> gumbo, dances. Yeah. She's just so cute. And it's a fun bit of animation how the snake is always helping her and running around tirelessly to make sure she doesn't hurt herself because she's blind and oblivious to everything. These little visual gags are what animation is so great at. You can't really get the same thing with live action. There's also the side characters like Lewis and Ray. I don't really like Lewis as a character, but Aww. he does have a really fun, expressive movement. And I do love Ray, and I love that he's designed like a light bulb. I know some people say that with CG, all the characters look the same. I don't necessarily always agree with that. Right. I think you can make pretty different characters, but I think that 2D, you can make more extremely different characters. While I do mm. love the animation and art style of The Princess and the Frog, it's actually one of my least favorite Disney movies, which I know probably sounds crazy because I just talked about how much I really love the way that it looks, but it's because of the story. I'm not going to go through all the problems I have with it, but the main one is the most common criticism, which is that Tiana should not be a frog for two thirds of her movie. I think she should have either stayed human or have both Naveen and Tiana turn human halfway through, and then they have to figure out how to get back because they're lost or something. I also would have loved if Vasilia was more directly tied to her. I actually think Anastasia does a very similar plot better, but anyway, this is not a review, so I'll just leave it at that. Visuals were so important to the creators of The Princess and the Frog that they insisted on no captions when reviewing the story beats. They wanted the pictures to tell the story themselves with no sound. And you can tell the amount of dedication they had to that in the final product. If only they did that with Wish, because I still have no idea what Asha's wishing for, even with sound. Contrast that to Tiana, where it's clear just from the images that she's wishing for her restaurant. When The Princess and the Frog was released in 2009, the plan was to revive 2D and all alternate it with CG movies. It's really heartbreaking watching the making of this movie because everyone was so hopeful. We knew the importance of this film that we were making and the idea that we were trying to show the world why hand-drawn animation should come back. And we all know what ended up happening. I don't know if this movie didn't do that well because of the animation style or the story or whatever it was, but I Girl, because the main princess is black. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. But I mean tell you that people really love animation and there is so much opportunity to innovate on 2D to still make it appealing to modern audiences. 2D has already evolved so much from the original cell animation to being drawn on computers. Plus there's so many other animation studios that are doing really cool things. The movie Klaus is completely 2D, just stylized to look 3D. Into the Spider-Verse is 3D stylized I've never to look seen this sort movie. of 2D. Arcane, which is one of my favorite oh, yeah, animations Arcane ever, uh, has I'm digitally hand painted two. CG animation. 2D is also still very much alive in anime. So I think there's hope. I don't think they should give up on it forever. What do you think is the most beautiful 2D animation? And it does not have to be Disney. Anyway, I love 2D. If Demon Slayer is 2D, then Demon Slayer, the fuck? Demon Slayer looks amazing, okay? Nothing has beaten the entertainment district though, in terms of like visual appeal. The entertainment district shook everyone with the standard that it set. And then going to like that nighttime scene with the swordsmith, Going from the flashiness to the somberness and sadness, it couldn't hold hold a uh, hold a candle. Yeah, I'm gonna rewatch this and rewatch Entertainment District Arc. This was a great video. I enjoyed this a lot. Y'all go uh, check our channel out. Period. That's it for me though. Uh, yeah, peace out.